Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the uh, Contemplative Light in the Darkness Eucharist. Welcome to online worship. Blessed be the one, holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you and also with you let us pray holy wisdom in your loving kindness you created and restored us when we were lost inspire us with your truth that we may love you with our whole minds and run to you with open hearts through Christ our Lord amen, amen. a reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians if anyone has reason to be confident in the flesh I have more circumcised on the eighth day a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one count that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. 
I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may obtain the resurrection of the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The statutes of the Lord rejoice the heart. The statutes of the Lord rejoice the heart. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. The statutes of the Lord rejoice the heart. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. The statutes of the Lord rejoice the heart. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The statutes of the Lord rejoice the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eye. The statutes of the Lord rejoice the heart. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the cold. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. The statutes of the Lord rejoice the heart. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. The statutes of the Lord 
rejoice the heart. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenant to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give them the produce at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you ever read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces fruit, the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The practice of Lexio Divina, which simply means sacred reading, is uh, an ancient practice going back to the earliest days of the church and probably predating it as there's a very similar practice in the Jewish tradition called Haggadah. Uh, But it's a way of praying scripture or being prayed by scripture uh, in which we shift our orientation from acquiring information to being formed into the one we follow after and call Lord, becoming a little bit more Christ-like, being open, receptive, and allowing uh, to let the love we receive from God in Christ through the Holy Spirit uh, make us a little bit more like that love uh, and then to be that love for other people when we leave this place. 
St. Benedict says we listen in Scripture, in, in Lexio Divina, with the ear of the heart. And this first time through, you're listening for a word, phrase, or image that in a certain way uh, chooses you. Scripture, of course, is living and active, and it speaks to each one of us individually in our unrepeatable uniqueness with a word of comfort, a word of challenge. Uh, and the task that's set before us in Lexio Divina is to be open and receptive uh, to how Scripture is speaking to us right here and right now. And really, Mary surrendered at the feet of Jesus is our icon. Uh, while Martha is rushing about and kvetching, complaining about uh, her sister not doing any work, Mary is seated at the feet of Jesus, listening entirely to him. Right? And we're told that she embodies the, the better part because she knows the one thing necessary. She knows that if she gives her entire attention to Jesus, everything else will take care of itself. So like Mary, we're listening for this word, phrase, or image that pops out. And the practice in this first stage is to gently repeat that word, phrase, or image uh, over in our hearts. Right? Uh, we're not trying to reflect upon it. We're not trying to figure it out at this stage. We're just practicing a very gentle practice of being with the word, getting a sense of its scent, its savor. If anyone has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, Whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ the righteousness from God based on faith. The second movement or moment in Lexio Divina is called the meditatio, or meditation, or simply reflecting. So first we read and then we reflect. And this is where we use our God-given gifts of memory, reason, and imagination to ponder in our heart with Mary what the word, phrase, or image that in a certain way chose us uh, has to say to us right here and right now. Uh, the question I ask is, what new way of seeing and being am I being called to step into, embrace, and embody by this word, phrase, or image? And conversely, what old, repetitive, mechanical, deeply patterned way of seeing and being in the world am I being gently prodded to let go of, to, to see through? to renounce or repent of. If anyone has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, 
as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. Sometimes when we're praying in this way, we find ourselves kind of spontaneously moved to offer up some kind of prayer, either silently or aloud, that somehow captures our engagement with this word, phrase, or image. So the third movement or moment of Lexio Divina is called oratio, or, or prayer, or responding. So first we read and we reflect and then we respond. And it's important in this part of Lexio Divina to think of our prayer as something very simple, right? Spoken from the heart. It doesn't have to be in fancy, ornate language with uh, triplets and parallelisms as in uh, Thomas Cranmer's beautiful prose of the 1549 prayer book. Probably best to think of ourselves as seated across the kitchen table, uh, speaking to a dear friend who is inordinately interested in what we have to say and uh, loves us unconditionally. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. The final movement of Lexio Divina is called Contemplatio, 
or contemplation, or as Gregory the Great calls it, resting in God. So we read, we reflect, we respond, and then we rest. Properly speaking, contemplation arrives as sheer gift. It's not a matter of a technique we can do well or badly. Uh, it's not a way to manipulate God. Uh, nonetheless, there are certain dispositions that we can cultivate, dispositions like willingness, allowing, receptivity. So in the practice of uh, contemplation, uh, we act a little bit like a, a sailor who learns how to trim her sails so that she can catch the wind. And part of trimming our sails, so to speak, is that we use the word, phrase, or image as a symbol of our intent. And our intent is simply to surrender to the presence and action of God within. When we find ourselves caught up in thoughts, identified with our thinking, pre-living our lives by thinking about the future or reliving our lives by thinking about the past, we use that word, phrase, or image as a way to renew our intent, to refresh our intention simply to be, to allow ourselves to be present to the presence of God. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews. As to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. Before we move to the prayers of the people, we normally, when we have the gift of in-person worship, uh, take a few minutes to uh, engage in some faith sharing. Uh, and uh, we share, you know, what word, phrase, or image uh, struck us, how we were reflecting upon the meaning of that word, phrase, or image in our lives. Uh, perhaps sharing the prayer that we found ourselves offering up, uh, and also reflecting on how it might shape how we conduct ourselves uh, in the week to come. So if you're with people at this time engaging in this practice, uh, you might take a, a minute or two now to just engage in a similar kind of 
faith sharing. And even if you're praying this alone, I encourage you to grab a pen and a pad of paper or a journal uh, and just jot down some of the reflections and prayers that were moving through you um, during uh, this contemplative praying of, of scripture. And uh, I invite you to sort of keep that journal, you know, close at hand and maybe return to it a couple times throughout the week. I often find that if I've jotted something like that down, it's, it's useful to come back to and use as kind of a spiritual reset button to reorient me, you know, come you know, Tuesday morning or Thursday evening or something, a way of kind of making our discipleship a 24-7 a uh, walk with God. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give our thanks and praise we praise you and we bless you holy and gracious God source of life abundant from before time you made ready the creation your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being Sun moon and stars earth winds and waters and every living thing you made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing.
Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. The night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary all you, and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. the gifts of God for the people of God.
faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though your people cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that they have received the forgiveness of sins and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your desire and be renewed for your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Praying together the post communion prayer on page 13. Loving God, God we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth, a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in the world in the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen.
us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.